Welcome to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Talking Tax with Tom Yamachika. We'll be right back in a moment to start our discussion. We're back. We're live with Tom Yamachika, uh, who joins us from the Tax Foundation of Hawaii uh, to talk about uh, tax this year. Um, we have a lot of bills just entered, just introduced. Um, these are the signature bills in the governor's package, including a bill to give uh, our citizens broad income tax relief, another bill to enact uh, GET exemptions, uh, and various other things. So this is going to be an exciting year, an exciting session uh, with the governor's bills anyway. Who knows what other bills will be introduced. So, Tom, tell us about what's going on. As you have probably seen, uh, the governor recently did his State of the State address uh, that was uh, picked up, had a lot of press coverage. And uh, with the State of the State address, the governor unveils his own uh, package of bills, and they get put into the legislative hopper. Now, the uh, the notable thing about this year's bill package is that um, typically each of the bills in the governor's package is identified by, uh, you know, a, 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 like a license plate number which has. Uh, a three-letter code for the agency that's primarily responsible for, for pushing it through, and, and a two-digit number. So this year, uh, the Department of Tax uh, put in Tax-01, uh, which is the bill to conform our income tax and uh, estate tax laws to the uh, Federal Internal Revenue Code. and, and We, it's we do doing, that every year, right? We do that every year. It's required by statute. Uh, and for the last few decades, this bill has been called Tax-01. The thing that's different this year is this, this year, Tax-01 is it for the Department of Taxation. There is no Tax-02 or Tax-03. Instead, what's happening is that tax did in fact draft a few more bills, but they are being kind of the signature pieces of the governor's package. So, so they're called governor's office bills. So uh, the, the primary one uh, that uh, you know, is being covered in the news is uh, Gov01, GOV01. And that uh, is sometimes known as the Green Affordability Plan, or GAP. Uh, is, that, is that green for environment or green for governor? Green for the governor. Yeah, the, the Green Affordability Plan. And, uh, you know, you, you can you can kind of say what you want about the name, uh, but the contents are actually fairly striking because uh, in the bill, uh, there are adjustments to uh, basically uh, each of the credits that are important to uh, you know low and middle income households, uh, and and by that I mean the food excise tax credit, uh, the low income household renters credit, uh, the credit for uh, dependent care expenses, uh, and I think there's there's one more that I'm missing. And on top of that, there are also proposed changes in the personal exemption amount, which everybody, uh, every everybody who files a, a, re a return can take, and uh, a significant boost in the standard deduction amount. This is all in GOV zero one. That's right. Uh, if you wanted to look it up yourself, Gov zero one. Uh, is introduced this year as Senate Bill 1347 and House Bill 1049. Usually it goes into both sides. Uh, it's introduced by the President of the Senate and the uh, Speaker of the House. Uh, and, and it's signed by request, which means that the, that the bill is being requested by somebody other than the, than the uh, Senate President and the House Speaker. 
Let me get something straight here. So ha have these bills been known as uh, Gov Bill this and that before, or is this something new? Uh, in previous years, the governor's office would uh, introduce its its own measures. I mean, there there have been Gov one, Gov two, and so forth in the past. Uh, but but this year it seems to be different in that um, they're actually tax bills, hmm. and and because they're being designated Gov one, Gov two, and so forth, uh, the governor's office itself. Uh, is going to be the agency primarily spearheading, uh, you know, those bills through the legislature. So, what does this tell us? Uh, this this tells us that the that the administration as a whole is taking much more of an interest uh, in these uh, so called tax reform bills uh, than perhaps in other in other years or in other other administrations. So it, it sounds like it's it's putting the, this Gov zero one bill is putting a whole bunch of stuff in there in addition to the standard required bill conforming uh, Hawaii taxes with federal changes. Um, that's, and that's new, isn't it? Yeah, no, the, the um, uh, tax reform is, uh, is not common. But in, in this in case, it's being lumped up with the standard bill con conforming. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, that, those, those are two different bills. Uh, okay. Tax 01 is uh, uh, is a different bill. It's, it's Senate Bill 1398 and House Bill 1087. Okay. So that, that, that's gonna, that, those two are going to kind of go off on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's up to the legislature uh, what they do with them, whether they pass them, whether they don't, whether they hold it, uh, whether they you know, take pieces of the bill and shove it just into something else. Uh, that all remains to be seen. Well, didn't you? Uh, didn't we discuss uh, last time around uh, the 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 change the the change up that we saw from the time that um, the governor was campaigning, and uh, he he talked about uh, exemptions uh, from a gross excise tax, and then he changed his his uh, his his approach to that with. A, a three hundred dollar across the board refund to everybody. What is that three hundred dollars still in play? Uh, we now have both of these items uh, coming up in front of the legislature. Um, actually, no. Uh, the uh, uh, the three hundred dollar rebate that was previously talked about isn't in the package at all. So, uh, it seems like the governor's uh, pivoted a little bit. And is trying a, a strategy that hasn't been at least publicly talked about before. Um, and they're using primarily the uh, the existing credits and the existing laws to deliver broad-based tax relief. Uh, what they have uh, said, as reported in the other media, uh, is that they are uh, really trying to, to uh, target uh, the Alice households, uh, Alice being an acronym for asset limited, um, income constrained, but employed. Okay, well, let me, let me uh, identify some of the things that I, I think are in play. One is uh, a new tax credit for teachers' expenses, um, changes in the amounts for the income tax brackets, I guess raising the, the amounts in the brackets so that the tax would apply only to higher income. Uh, personal exemption amount changed. Standard deduction amount changed. Uh, and then a, a, a gross excise tax exemption for certain groceries, feminine hygiene products, incontinence products. Yeah, that, that's, sure. that's in Gov02. Right. The, the general okay. excise tax, the general all excise tax play, stuff. All in play. Yeah. And over-the-counter drugs. This probably this is quite remarkable because we haven't had a lot of exemptions over the years. Right. Uh, usually, when you and I are talking about bills that are introduced in a legislative session, uh, they're they're mostly about bills to raise taxes one way or another, or or make life more difficult for taxpayers. This this one uh, is 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 quite the opposite. And then hmm. this session. 
uh, really looks at uh, you know giving, uh, like I said, broad-based tax relief. Well, is this the right time for it? I mean, it sounds like it's politically nice. Everybody will like these changes, the changes I just identified. Um, they are a reform, I guess you could say. It certainly will will please taxpayers. But um, do we have the funds uh, where we could take the hit for the additional taxes? That this, well, the reduction in, in tax revenues this will result in. Um, are we flush? Do we have the money to do this? Are we paying our other bills? Why now? Well, uh, right now we're uh, the state of Hawaii is sitting on top of a, a surplus over a billion dollars, and uh, there have been, you know, various groups calling on, you know, lawmakers and the governor and everybody else to to do something about it to, to uh, you know, uh, to help because. Uh, taxpayers have been in pain for a very long time, and 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 they're showing it by, you know, buying one-way plane tickets. Hmm. Hmm. With here okay. as the starting point. Well, I, you know, I just and the, and the last part of my question is: uh, Are we paying our bills? Uh, are we paying our mm, funded and unfunded, liquidated and unliquidated liabilities? Um, and we'll get to this in a minute, but you know, it's going to cost plenty of money. And to deal with homelessness, it's going to cost a ton of money to deal with climate impact. Um, and um, a query, can we afford to give it away? We gave away, what, $600 million to uh, OHA last year. Um, yeah, they're, and- they're scoring uh, Gov01 at $300 million, a little bit more than $300 million in revenue loss. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, it's basically this... Uh, the, the same amount of, of, of money as was given away in the rebate last year. Because the, the rebate last year, the, you know, the $300 per exemption or so forth, translated to, uh, I think, a high $200 million. So, but uh, my question is, are we paying our bills? It's nice to give away money. Everybody loves a government that gives away money and reduces taxes. This is a, a delight. But um, are we, are we paying, paying our, our bills? bills? Well, that's that's debatable. Um, we we have certainly uh, some some huge huge bills for uh, post employment benefits for uh, you know retired state employees, uh, and you know depending on which actuarial numbers uh, you believe, uh, we either. Uh, haven't funded those adequately, or, uh, or, or we're kind of on track to paying those. I mean, but, but that's you know a big enough number uh, that you can't settle it in one year. I mean, it's 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 got to be a multi-year commitment. You know, just like you know when you uh, buy a house and take a mortgage, you 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 pay the debt over you know thirty years or so, and uh, because. Especially here, you know, buying a house, there's no way that a, a normal person can can pay that off in, in just one year. Hmm. What does the Council on Revenues uh, say? How are we doing? I think the um, the last COR report uh, uh, showed us on track to uh, you know some some increased numbers. Uh, I. I, I don't know exactly. I, I can't. I don't, rec- I don't recall exactly what they were, but um, but but we're in good shape. Okay, you know, I mean, uh, I, I I love hearing you say that, but at the same time, um, you know, we don't know what next year will bring, um, or even this year for that matter. I mean, we could have a, an extreme weather experience that would change everything you've said. And, uh, well, of course, we... and and in, and in that case, we can you know take it up next year, uh, and and kind of you know suspend things or or scale things back, but but I think it's really important to uh, to be talking about you know not simply uh, a one year rebate, but but something that's more permanent. I mean the uh, one one problem with your income tax law, you know consistently has been 
that we don't index anything for inflation. So, uh, you know, people can get, you know, raises uh, to keep up, to simply keep up with the cost of inflation and find that they're in higher tax brackets. And 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 this has been going on for years and years and years. I, I think we, we're basically using uh, tax brackets, at least you know, on the low end, that have been established in the 1960s. That's that's uh, you know almost as old as me. <laughs> I won't comment on that, Tom. <clears throat> nor will I turn it on myself. Um, in any event, okay. But these exemptions uh, from the gross excise. Uh, these changes in the income tax, they are ostensibly permanent. They're not a one-year deal. There's no you know, sunset uh, on, the, on, on the, these benefits, these reform items that have been included uh, in at least part of the governor's uh, package, right? Uh, that's right. Now, um, as it goes through the legislative process, that may change. But, but at, at least uh, right now, uh, these are are permanent changes, and uh, and and like I've been, I think, writing for some time. You know, permanent changes are are what we need. Uh, you know, temporary changes are you know maybe nice in the short term, but uh, it's, it's 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 just so often that that tax bills start off with you know temporary increases, then turn into permanent ones. It's it's time we have some permanent decreases to to, to counter, you know, some of those. Mm. Uh, okay, well, we'll put our worries about the future aside and en enjoy the moment. But let's talk about the uh, the visitor green fee. That's a double entendre. The visitor green fee program uh, in Gov zero three. What is that? The idea there, uh, and this has been floating. Uh, around for some time during uh, the governor's campaign uh, would be to charge uh, tourists uh, $50 a head for a one-year license to, to visit state-owned natural resources like parks and nature preserves, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, we, we've spoken, you know, we in the Tax Foundation have spoken on that kind of program before. And and you know there are some constitutional issues you know with the U.S. Constitution. Why don't you that, identify those that, that we need to get around? Um, we have something, for example, called the, the Privileges and Immunities Clause, and what that says is that if you're a citizen of the United States, uh, then then basically you're entitled to the same privileges as any other citizen in, in any any other state. So. Uh, and there have been cases that the Supreme Court of the U.S. the U.S. has been decided has has decided, you know, some t uh, some of them back in the 19th century, uh, that that talked about hey, um, being a citizen of the U.S. and having these privileges and immunities means you can go anywhere in the U.S. without restriction. If you know if if Nevadans can go, uh, you know, to to Reno, then. Uh, you as a as a Hawaii citizen, when visiting Nevada, can go to Reno also. Uh, and uh, really, no state has the uh, has the right or the power to to stop you from doing that. Hmm. Uh, what about the Commerce Clause? Well, you know, the Commerce Clause is a little bit different. I mean, they 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 say basically. Um, when you're doing business, you can't discriminate it against um, uh, people from a state that's not yours. Okay, uh, and you know that may be in play too. But uh, but the idea is uh, that you, as a state, uh, need to treat uh, the, the people before you equally, whether they whether they're coming from your own state or someplace else. This sounds like a serious problem for the um, the governor's visitor green fee to distinguish between locals and visitors. Well, um, the, the 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 thing is, what you can do is, uh, like uh, you know, for uh, certain specific places, uh, like, and I think there's a case that's been decided on Hanawa Bay, you know, here in Honolulu. 
it says it's perfectly it's perfectly possible uh, to charge a user fee for you know for people who go into the park, and, and it's it's also uh, permissible to exempt your residents because they're paying taxes whose money is being used to keep up the park, and from the uh, user fees that you collect, you know, you use that stuff to maintain the park. That's not a problem. Okay. Uh, the problem is uh, when you kind of mush all the parks together and and use the money for uh, you know broad based purposes, then it starts looking less like a user fee and more like a tax, and and a tax on uh, access to you know lands within your state uh, is is just not not permissible. Well, how's the bill set up? Is the money going to the general fund, or is the is the bill required to go for the maintenance of the individual park or a group of parks? Well, as the bill is set up right now, uh, it is uh, going to the I believe a a special fund controlled by the Department of Land and Natural Resources, uh, which seems to be uh, on the problematic side. For what reason? Uh, because it's too broad-based. Hmm. Oh, I see. It goes to the department uh, rather than uh, specific parks from which uh, the green fee was uh, assessed. Right. Hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. Maybe that'll have to be hashed out in court, or if the legislature sees this coming, they might want to change it, improve it. Uh, what about uh, Gov04, which is, this is really interesting, the Climate Impact Special Fund, five cents a barrel uh, from the, I guess it's an additional barrel tax, or is it the existing barrel tax? Yeah, we we currently have a barrel tax on imported fossil fuel products. Um what the what gov what gov zero four proposes to do is to to establish yet another special fund called the climate impact special fund, and uh, and feed it with a nickel per barrel uh, from it's from the barrel tax above and beyond the existing barrel tax. No, no, it's it's from the existing barrel tax. Mm, so okay. so there's there's no additional tax assessed. Did it's, just, it's just make diverting the proceeds. Anybody make an analysis of how much that would actually, you know, uh, re uh, re recover for the state? Uh, I'm I'm sure somebody has. Uh, the numbers haven't been shared with me yet, um, but it's uh, a much much smaller um, dollar impact than uh, what we're talking about with like Gov Zero One or Gov Zero Two. And I recall the barrel tax has been the subject of a lot of um, change, well, conversation and um, and changes over the years. And uh, originally, it was intended to deal with environmental issues, uh, energy issues, as I recall. And then everybody, every state agency wanted a piece of it. And before you know it, it's been pretty well fragmented. Um, oh, yeah, it started off as uh, basically a nickel a barrel. And it was to uh, come up with a fund to protect against, you know, crises like the uh, the Exxon Valdez. Um, and then before you know it, it went it went from five cents to a dollar five. Yeah, but now it'd still be a dollar five, or would be a dollar ten? No, it's, it's it would still be a dollar five. Okay, I, I and I, I wish uh, this. I wish you were telling me that this bill clarifies and rationalizes. How this tax is, uh, you know, supposed to work, and who gets what and why, because it, it just seems to be, um, you know, a hodgepodge. Yeah, I mean, um, f from our organization's perspective, uh, we're not big fans of the barrel tax in the first place, and we're not big fans of special funds. So we have uh, we have a lot not to be happy about with this uh, with this particular bill. Mm. So where is this climate impact fund supposed to go? Um, who manages it? <clears throat> what is its uh, ostensible purpose? Climate change is a big issue, and it could be very expensive. My, and let me predict it will be very expensive. 
Yeah, uh, I think uh, DLNR is supposed to deal with that one as, as well. Uh, the, the bill number there uh, is Senate Bill 1350 and House Bill 1052. I wouldn't be too optimistic this is going to work. Um, it's, and I guess it's this is the first time anybody has actually attempted to create a climate impact special fund, uh, whatever you think about special funds. In other words, there isn't a special fund of this nature right now. This is brand new, right? Well, we have you know thousands of special funds already. I'm sure uh, we, we have a few that are close. <laughs> okay. Nobody knows exactly how close or where the overlap is or how this one relates to the other ones. It's very nice. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's one reason why why we're not such big fans of special funds, uh, because there's so so darn many of them, you can't keep track of anything. And, and uh, it becomes that much more difficult to keep track of, you know, the, you know, your and my tax dollars that are kind of like swirling around somewhere in the ether. Um, and, you know, it, it really blurs the accountability lines. Well, yeah, it, 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 and it blurs what happens to the money. You know, it dissolves into we know not exactly what DLNR uh, may or may not do, um, you know, a fund that, that you and I would think of. Uh, it may not spend the money or even identify the purpose of the fund in terms of spending the money the way you and I would. And, and, you, and, you know, for example, I mean, so many things happen in the world and people do not necessarily associate those, those problems, those disasters, if you will, those weather events with climate change. They just report that there is a weather event, there is a disaster, there is a forest fire, but they don't necessarily um, connect it directly or even indirectly with climate, climate change. So, I mean, it's, it's really an interesting question. Suppose you had a lot of money in this fund. Uh, who decides whether it should go for this purpose or that purpose when it's really not clear, even to the environmentalist, whether the, you know, the problem is a result of climate change? Well, I mean, you would just uh, have to trust our government bureaucrats to make that decision. Okay, that makes me want to move, uh, move on. <laughs> to uh, uh, Gov06, and that's a, a GET exemption for construction of affordable housing units. <clears throat> Indeed, yeah, uh, primarily... you know, the governor was very excited about housing, affordable housing when he was lieutenant governor, so this is a natural progression. But what, oh, yes. what does the bill do? Uh, well, one of the, the uh, signature pieces of this bill is to establish a uh, rental deposit loan program. I mean, you know, like people who... Uh, want to rent have to typically come up with three months rent in advance, right? One, uh, one, uh, the first two for a security deposit, uh, and and then you actually need to pay for the first month's rent in advance. So, you know, for most people, you know, making the monthly rent rental payments tough enough. Uh, you know, th three is, uh, you know, something that they need to. To, to borrow for. Uh, so one of the things that this bill would do is to create a, uh, a rental, loan pro rental loan program so that people can do just that. Hmm. Is, that is that a good solution uh, to, to achieve affordable housing? Uh, well, it, it's something certainly something different than, than what's already been done. Um, I, I have I have no idea how people are getting those other two months uh, rent under you know under current circumstances, and um, it's quite possible that they're you know that the, the housing experts said well this is a, this is a big issue let's need we need to do something about that. Hmm. Yeah, I guess this is something which hasn't been done, and we'll have to watch and see. I mean, if it is if it is enacted. We'll have to watch and see uh, whether it actually addresses the problem or it's just a big giveaway. In any event, um, I guess my, my final question to you, Tom, is how does it look for these bills? How does it look for tax, tax reform in the state of Hawaii right now? Um, you know, what, 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 
what what is the community going to say? What is it saying? Um, are the people who are interested in these bills going to, uh, you know, accept them, ride with them? Are they going to look for big changes? Are they going to oppose them? What is the environment, if you will, in the legislature about tax reform? Well, um, as you might expect, uh, the current environment in the legislature uh, is that the legislative leaders are not wholeheartedly embracing tax reform. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of explaining to do. You know, why now? Uh, you know, some of the some of the points you raised earlier. Uh, don't we have other bills? Uh, you know, what we need this revenue. You know, next year or the following year or the following year. Um, I think there's going to be some pressure to to scale back some of the uh, you know ambitious uh, goals that uh, that's that are that are written into this bill, uh, and and we'll you know see what ultimately happens with this. Yeah. What are the primary committees? You know who are going to be processing these bills? Uh, we would think that the uh, Oh, certainly the money committees will be uh, will be having a heavy hand in this. Yeah, that's Senate Ways and Means and House uh, Finance. Finance. And then maybe the housing committees, um, maybe consumer protection. We you know we don't know. Uh, I, I I haven't seen the referrals on 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 these bills, but that's easy enough to look up in the uh, on the Capitol website. Well, I come away with, I appreciate your comments on this, but I, I come away with the notion that uh, these are, some of these things are untried. And uh, of course, the staffers can say, well, we think it's going to work this way or that way. We think the bottom line in, in dollars will be this or that. Um, but we really don't know until we, until we see how it plays out. And the other thing is um, that, you know, you have, you have really a lot of changes in in the tax structure and what we've discussed in, in this half hour. And I think that, you, you know, you get a certain amount of resistance to change. I'm not saying change is bad. Change is inevitable. I'm only saying that in Hawaii, there is customarily resistance to change. Your thoughts about all of that? No, I think that's, that's absolutely true. Um, there's resistance to change everywhere, uh, especially here, I think. And you know, taking these uh, these bold action steps uh, is is going to require a lot of convincing. Uh, so, uh, I I think the uh, the governor's uh, the governor's staff uh, is really bracing for that. They're they they really are putting together a coordinated campaign to to, you know, to get their message out. Um, and uh, you know, see if they can take some bold steps along the tax front, which, which really, you know, nobody's done in a number of years. So uh, I wish them luck. Yeah. Well, at least um, you know they're bold. They may not get through, but they will initiate a conversation about tax, and maybe that's a good thing because even if they, even if they fail for one reason or get derailed for one reason or another. Uh, it seems to me the conversation is a good conversation to have, and the public ought to be more interested in in the way the tax, uh, tax all taxes in Hawaii are structured, and the way that the tax receipts are uh, you know spent. So it's uh, it must be a joy, at least as far as that's concerned, uh, for the tax foundation to see this conversation broadened. Oh yes, I mean, uh, it's it's. <laughs> We we hate being the uh, the bringers of gloom and doom news every year, as we report on what the legislature is doing. It's 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 good to have at least some prospects of good news to report. Well, thank you, Tom Tom Yamachika, Tax Foundation of Hawaii, uh, here on Talking Tax on Think Tech. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay, and thank you for having me on the show. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo.
You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.